Hi and welcome to this edition of Marketing Tips for Authors, the video version. My name is Tony Eldridge. I'm the author of the action-adventure book, The Samson Effect, that Clive Cussler calls a first-rate thriller brimming with intrigue and adventure. Okay, in today's video tip, we're going to be talking about branding. Now, we all know what branding is. It's that element that we use to help the public to identify with us. It could be a logo. How many people know the golden arches when they see it is identified with McDonald's? It could be something like a jingle. How many times have we heard that freecreditreport.com guitar singer sing that folksy song that gets stuck in our head? It could be something like clothing. We have a retired local weatherman who always wore a bow tie that was part of his brand. And even authors with book covers, many publishers will publish similar looking covers or styles of covers to help their readers identify with them as a branding technique. Now you may not have a large budget with a publishing company behind you. You may be on your shoestring budget, but there are still some things you can do to help brand yourself in the public. We're going to be talking about one of those things today. A very simple thing that you can do. We're going to be talking about how you can create your very own what's called a favicon. Now a favicon or a favorite icon are those little icons that you see up on the URL board. So if you look up here you'll see a favicon that I've just created uh, with a, uh, a red background with the white letters tips for my new Marketing Tips for Authors website. If you look at my blogger blog you'll notice the familiar orange background with a big B that's on every blogger blog some people actually have their photos up as a favicon all they are are small little 16 by 16 pixels that we can upload to the URL we can upload to the tabs. Anytime that someone visits our page, they see this. And this is, in, in essence, a branding technique. And I'm going to show you today how you can create one of these in just five minutes, upload it to your website. If you have access to uh, an FTP transfer uh, where you can upload your web pages to your website, you can create your own favorite today and have it on your website. Now, there are a lot of different ways you can do it. I've actually seen people uh, on the internet offer to charge $50, $75, or as much as $150 to design a favicon and to get it uploaded for you. There is a site that, to me, makes this extremely easy, and it's worth you checking out. It's dynamicdrive.com. It's tools.dynamicdrive.com backslash favicon. If you're looking at the video tip on my website, you're going to see the link under the tip. Uh, if um, you're not, you may want to do a dynamic drive search to come to their website. Now here's all you do to create your own personal favicon. Perhaps you want to use your book cover as your favicon. Whatever it is, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is browse your computer and pull up your favicon. I've actually put one of my book covers on here and we're going to walk through the process of creating a favicon out of my book cover. It gives you all the different um, technical requirements on what kind of file it needs to be, how big it needs to be, all those informations. Once you read through that, pick out your favicon and then you create your icon. Now it's going to tell me here's a 16 by 16 preview of what my favicon is going to look like. Sure enough, the Samson effect, if you've seen the book cover, it's a very dark book cover with a reddish um, rising sun or a setting sun in the background. So we say okay I like it. The next thing we do is save this and I will go ahead and save this to my desktop and I'm gonna close out this window so you can see my two beautiful twin boys and I'll drag this favicon into the viewing area. Now that's what it's going to look like and that's what's going to be uploaded to the website. So we don't change the naming convention at all. We need to keep this favicon.ico and then if we scroll down it's going to give us 
the steps that we need to do in order to put this on our website. So it's going to tell us to upload that generated figure uh, file that we just looked at to our website. We can verify it's there by typing in this location. So in this case, if I were to put this on the SamsonEffect.com, I put HTTP SamsonEffect.com slash and then the name favicon.ico and it will show me if it's there. The next thing that we do is actually go through and copy this line exactly as it is and then put this in the HTML code on our index page or actually any page at all. I'm going to go back to my tips page. If you look, you'll see that I created my own favicon. The word tips in white with a red background to match the look and feel of my page. I actually put this on the about page. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to show you the source code. And there it is. That's the code. And all I did was go into the, the uh, source code on the page that I designed, uploaded it there. As soon as I did and I put that page on the internet, my favicon started showing up on every single one of my leaks. So it really doesn't matter what page you go to on my site now that favicon is going to show. This is a very small technique, a very simple technique that you can use to really start enhancing your branding ability on the internet. I hope that you have an opportunity to really sit down and think about how you want people to identify with you and then find the perfect uh, favicon that you're going to use that other people will start seeing. My name is Tony Eldridge. I'm so glad that you spent this time with me as we started looking at one small branding element to help people identify who you are and what product you're going to sell. I look forward to seeing you at our next tip.